This is so exciting. It makes it all worthwhile, all the hours spent arming and oaring. Since the last video, in fact the day after, I just really wasn't happy with this stepper motor and the gear that turns the whole neck around because it just it was sticking a little bit and the reason for that was because the original gear I used had 25 teeth and that was engaging on this which has 50 teeth so the gear ratio was well basically this had to turn around twice to do a full rotation of this that was still taking quite a lot of power out of the motor and it wasn't quite coping with it if there were any little sticky bits so what I did was change the design slightly so now I'm very pleased with this because that gear has now got 11 teeth so 11 to 50 is about 1 to 5 or something so it has to go roughly 5 times round which means that the head goes slower the neck goes slower but it's far more powerful and able to cope it's five times more powerful in effect I'm sure that's not the right terminology or nomenclature but never mind other things I did I drilled four holes here so that I could access the screws if I twist this slightly you can see I can access the screws to this top bit this bit here and something like that just makes such a lot of difference because that means I don't have to assemble this and screw this down before I do that, before I do that, sort of like catch 22. I can put that bottom bit together and then screw this on as and when, or take it off for adjustments and things. Now, if I switch this on, there, so you can get a better idea of how, you know, the neck still turns perfectly fine, but I think there's some problem with the, uh, I don't know what this is doing because now it's gone back to doing that, I can't remember what I set it up to do to test it, anyway it works perfectly so that's great now to get on with making the mouth open and close having been working on the virtual designs which I have to say I really do prefer real wood plastic metal and stuff but you know working in the work, virtual world is I think the concern is that you can spend hours and hours and hours and then find that stuff doesn't work so what I've done is to print out, just to check with the jaw on the mouth for Victoria, I've just printed the bottom part of her head with the two pivot points, the two holes moulded in, moulded, printed in. And also, just while I'm talking about that, you can see, I, in the end, because it's printing upside down, I've added two triangles here, just so that as it prints, well, do it the right way up, so as it starts printing inwards it can actually build out these two sections with the pivot holes in otherwise it would just start trying to build the first bit out and go all over the place I've got that it also have the mouth and what I've done with the mouth is to have a slot along the back and little locating knobbly bits and two little locating holes which work really well and threaded holes printed my joy of printing threaded holes M4 that's going to be fitted together round the two pins so let's put that together and see what happens I haven't tried this yet so it will be interesting very pleased with that. Let's just zoom in a little bit. Look at that. That is perfect. The washers stop it touching from the sides and there's still enough give so it can carry on moving. It's free enough for gravity to allow it to drop down which is what I want. I've also with this one to ensure it doesn't bang against the neck I've made sure I've put a radius around here because with Florence I ended up having put it together having to cut a whole load of the neck away to enable the mouth to open and close. So what I did before, I've done this because I wanted to see whether that would work and there's lots that's gone into this. But the next job is to work at how to move it, how to open and close it. The plan is to use this. This is a solenoid. It's basically a coil of wire that runs on 5 volts this one and it's got a soft iron core with a spring that returns it to its starting point. Now if I switch this on with 5 volts it does that 
So with Florence's head I used a motor, a sort of cheaty motor to try and open and close the mouth which worked well but I wanted something a little bit more reliable and with a bit more longevity because I don't know how long the motor is going to last because it, it basically just keeps stalling a motor, jamming it stopped and that's not the best thing to do, that may work perfectly forever but I don't know but at least with a solenoid I know that's what this is designed to do so somehow I've got to link this to the inside of the mouth and I want it so that the mouth is normally closed until the solenoid switched on then it opens so I'm going to work that out, I thought that was going to be much easier to do just by hashing together something here to work out weights and whether I need a counterbalance on the back or a spring to keep this closed and how much force this can exert all sorts of stuff so that's going to be a nice little practical experiment, nice hands on experiment number one, I've got the solenoid mounted under a bit of wood, I just wanted to very quickly be able to see whether it would work. Like I said the solenoid has got a little spring that always pushes it back out and I'm very pleased to say that that spring is strong enough to to lift the jaw back up the mouth which is brilliant so when there's no power it's closed and then I'm filming all sorts of strange angles if I switch it on the mouth opens so that's good, that's a start, although what I've noticed is there is a slight delay when I switch it off. I'm not quite sure why, I think I need to do some more experiments. The other thing I've noticed is I was thinking by varying the pulse width modulation, the voltage to this solenoid, I might be able to get the mouth to open halfway or something, but if I switch this on and then turn the voltage down, I'm turning it down, it's reached 0.2 volts and that's still enough to hold the solenoid open. If I finally switch off 0.2 volts then it sh opens, shuts, whatever. If I put it back on at 0.2 volts, nothing. So you need to turn the voltage up to about 2.5 volts before it will respond. And the other thing I need to work out is the clunking noise. That took some doing in Florence's head but oh, come on focus. There's the little spring and when that slams in, that's what makes the clunk. Now, what I could do is to look at the other end of it. The other end, as this comes in, it's just all fingers and thumbs, let's just use the power. You get a little brass thing popping out. Now, what I could do is to have some sort of little felt pad here. I think I will have a look into that. Perhaps something you could stick a screwdriver up a nose to adjust. Heaven any news. Oh! I will try putting something in here, perhaps with another bit of blue tack, and see if that stops that clunk. This is all very exciting. So by putting a little bit of felt, and a bit of blue tack for now, on this end, as it tries to slam over, it stops it, and that's much, much quieter. So that's great. The jaw clatters, clacks a bit when it shuts again. But I reckon what I'm going to do is I'm going to now work out uh, mounting for this uh, that can be incorporated into the head rather than having a bit of wood and some blue tack sticking out and I will make some sort of adjustable pad at this end perhaps underneath, yeah you can un adjust it by opening her mouth and going up through there perhaps rather than a bolt sticking out the end of her nose and this end also having some sort of little threaded thing possibly with another felt pad on to adjust how high how much the mouth closes. That does look very strange. Excellent. It's a couple of days later and work has continued. I thought I'd try and get this video to include an end to the mouth actually having it finished. So I thought this was worth adding. There's the original one that you have just seen which worked really nicely but had a few issues. My next problem was to work out how to fix, let's zoom in a little bit, how to fix this inside here. This is just glued in, which I don't really want to do because it needs to be more precise. So the next version, I thought, well, let's kill several birds with one stone. So I recessed these bits and put uh, an M3 screw, what am I trying to say, an M3, M3 thread in there on the other side. 
and then try to print out a load of these. The good thing about these was that they should take these sides up flush to the inside of the mouth so that you don't see this gap here when the, mouth, when the mouth's open. Also, I did this bit which should stop you seeing the hinge at the back of the mouth. The idea was that that would sit in there and that seems to sit in there beautifully. And as you can see by this plus 0.5 and there's another one which is minus one and another one that is oh, just so many I tried to get them to fit but to cut a long story short they just wouldn't I couldn't get the insides to line up big gap there very awkward to get a screw in so after several frustrating hours I thought let's have a rethink this this dear friends I'm very pleased with oh look at that so with this one I changed it to make this flush all along here, cut a slot in here because the, the problem always is that I'm going to print this this way up. I need to have the draft angle, the angle along here, about what did I say, about 15 degrees, to allow it to print upwards without having any severe overhang. So sorted that out and then came up with this super improved design. And this super improved design slots in these two holes. Oh, look at that. When you get it right, it is so satisfying. It makes all the experiments worthwhile. So, the inside of the mouth is now nice and clean. I've got something to protect and hide the back of the hinge and the, the mouth, mouth parts. What I'm going to do now is to assemble it all and I'll get back to you. these lovely adjusters they slide perfectly it is always worth adding some sort of adjustment when you've got um, some sort of mechanism that has to align properly my thinking with this now is I've hollowed out a little disc a circular shape inside the nose oh that's what a nose looks like from the inside fascinating um, and I'm going to put a little felt or some sort of foam or rubber or something here so that when this shoots on to stop this end clunking in, this little brass bit can hit um, a little foam pad. And that way, by sliding this back and forwards, I should be able to get it so it stops it just before the clunk. And then what I was thinking was at this end, when it releases and the mouth closes, I don't know. I'll have a think about that. This thing is doing my head in a little bit anyway, trying to stop the clunking. I tried putting felt things here and there, but it still clunks. So I th the current plan is to print a titchy little 3D thing that looks like, if I zoom in and it focuses, looks like that. So it's got a felt pad both sides. This felt pad stops it clunking when it switches off, when it does that. And that felt pad stops it clunking when it does that, switches on. But the problem with this is it's reducing the amount of movement too much. It's meant to be 7mm and I think it's down to about 5 now or something, which isn't good. So what I've gone and done, luckily I bought two of these, and this one I have drilled out. I've drilled out the end. I realised you could actually take it to pieces. I thought it was worth a try. And there's a little screw. That's the bit that sticks out, the far end of the solenoid. So I unscrewed it. Sure enough, it comes out, and then I've drilled down here to get out another little bit of metal that was in there. In fact, to be completely explicit and detailed, that bit. So, what I've found is, it was exciting, screwing things up and about, is that now the, the throw, the movement, is much longer. Obviously it's going to lose force the further out it gets, but it's completely silent. Now the, ba Ooh, now the back of this isn't banging into that bit, it's silent. The spring just collapses nicely, well compresses, and that's fine. It's not going to be able to fly out because I'm going to have the this stop here on the mouth, so it can't fly out. 
So what I'm going to do now is take this to pieces, replace it with this version without the back end and see what happens. You know, when you spent about three, two or three days trying to figure out one little bit, it does start grating a little bit and that's why it's so nice when... Look at that. Well, the jaw's stuck, but look at that. No, come on, mouse. Yeah, look at that. Now that, to my mind, is silent. The throw is much, much longer. It's still powerful enough to lift the mouth up and down. The mouth opens a nice long way. Oh, that's lovely. The only clunk is when the mouth closes. And I reckon I might be able to do something down here. I need to print a version design and print one with this lever on it anyway. But I think by having a little adjustment screw in there or something, or even just a bit of felt, and I keep forgetting I can take this to pieces easily. I have a little pad of felt there. Got to be careful with this because I've lost it on the carpet of invisibility several times. Little pad here, as this comes up, because the bottom of it is below the pivot, so it's moving towards the bottom of that, it might be possible to have a little disc of felt down there, and that would stop that. I'm going to try that now. This is so exciting. It makes it all worthwhile, all the hours spent umming and ahhing. What I've done, it's just brilliant. I finally got it connected up to um, the Arduino. I'm just using one of the channels on one of the little interface for the stepper motor to drive the solenoid. I've loaded a bit of, um, is it time for team shit? Oh, isn't that typical? Every time. It just knows when to switch the screen off. I have loaded a little bit of the software, the Play Word software from um, the function from Is It Time For Tea for Florence's Machine so that I can just see what this looks like. And this I don't know what this sentence is playing but this is absolutely perfect and it's so silent. In the end, keeping everything as simple as possible, keep it simple stupid, in the end I got rid of that little extra bit of the solenoid and left this one in and the spring just dampens any noise at all. Also, trying for ages to work out how to stop it clacking when the mouth closed. Again, really simple. If I look at underneath, I didn't have any white felt, but I'll cut a nice piece of felt that just fits under there. I trimmed the mouth a bit so it wouldn't hit the lips. You would never know, but it looks great now and it's silent. It's just, you know, the only padding is at the maximum minimum parts of the movement. That is absolutely fantastic. I'm so pleased. What's that whirring noise I hear you cry? It's one of these fantastic, fabulous kits where you can make your very own working steampunk gauges. Excellent. Battery power or they can run off a 4 to 12 volt supply. And you can build them yourself and decorate them yourself or you can get them ready made. They're available from steamhead.co.uk That's steamhead.co.uk Or if you want them delivered abroad you can go to my Etsy shop at Steamhead Inventions. Hey, thank you very much. Thanks very much for watching. And um, please do subscribe if you're watching on YouTube or like if you're watching on Facebook. I can never remember what I meant to say. But hopefully I'll see you again soon when I've got her eyes moving. Brilliant. Thanks very much.